denied on Tired Nation. Right, this is an interesting one. New South Wales using prisoners as political pawns, critics say, after state refuses to let United Nations inspectors into detention facility. Queensland also revealed to be restricting access to mental health wards despite Australia's ratification of United Nations torture protocol. Now before we get into uh, the article, these ratifications of this agreement that was under Malcolm Turnbull are actually backed up by Hague Conventions and Geneva Conventions and international humanitarian law. What, what you'll find is, is that this is a simplified version to oversee mental health within United Nations ratified countries. The New South Wales Premier, Dominic Perrottet, has hailed as a great decision the Queensland Government's move to limit United Nations inspectors from accessing the state's inpatient units. But critics say New South Wales is using prisoners as political pawns and both states should open their doors to allow inspectors full access under Australia's commitment to the optional protocol to the Convention Against Torture, OPCAT. Inspectors from the United Nations Subcommittee on Prevention of Torture arrived in Australia this week with plans to conduct surprise visits on state, territory and Commonwealth detention facilities over 12 days. However, New South Wales has said it will refuse to grant them access. The state's corrections minister, Jeff Lee, told 2GB Radio on Thursday that inspectors had been refused entry to Queen Bean facility on Tuesday night. The officers did the right thing and refused them entry, he said. The whole role of our jail system is to keep people safe. So we have a question right in the middle of the article at They've got something to hide because they're always telling you, well, if you've got nothing to hide, then let them in. And now the reverse is brought upon them and they seem to want to clamp down and have everything to hide. Well, it could be said to the state of New South Wales and to the state of Queensland, if you've got nothing to hide, then let the United Nations have a look. The whole role of our jail system is to keep people safe, protect us from the criminals that we lock up every day. It's not to allow people just to wander through at their leisure. The wording in this sentence is very strong in who the us are and who the we are. And it's obvious that they are not the prisoners or the people that they just want to let wander through at their leisure. It's their little building that they run, that they protect themselves using. They should be off to Iran looking for human rights violations there. God forbid Australia might actually commit international war crimes like they did under a Brereton report. Earlier, Guardian Australia revealed Queensland was also planning to limit the access of inspectors. While they would be allowed into the state's prisons, the health department would not allow them access inpatient units where people ordered to undergo treatment or charged with crimes were being held under state law. It's important because they're now not being allowed in to a health department where a bulk of torture would actually occur. At a press conference on Thursday, Perrottet described this as a great decision from Queensland, refuting that it was a bad look 
for governments to be blocking access. We have some of the strongest conditions anywhere in the world, he said. OPCAT was ratified by the federal government under the former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull in 2017. This is the first time inspectors have visited Australia. So here you have a federal decision that a state is now refusing to honour. Under its mandate, the SPT is able to make unannounced visits to all detention facilities and conduct private interviews with people deprived of their liberty without witnesses. People deprived of their liberty without witnesses. It's kind of an important thing that independent visitors do within the New South Wales jail systems already. Why are they allowed to do that and not the United Nations? Amnesty International Australia campaign director Tim O'Connor said, the refusal to allow inspectors access jeopardised Australia's ability to meet its deadlines and obligations under the treaty. So it's not just this treaty, it's The Hague, it's Geneva, it's international humanitarian law, it's the laws of armed conflict. There is a little bit more at play underneath simplifying some certain aspects of those laws into a single agreed upon treaty or convention. It seems that the refusal to allow inspectors into places of detention in New South Wales is a tactic by the state government to secure funding from the federal government. And if that is the case, it's incredibly concerning, O'Connor said. People in detention centres, yet again, are being used as pawns by governments who continue to play politics with their lives. Chief Executive of the Queensland Advocacy for Inclusion, Matilda Alexander, said she held grave concerns about the psychological and physical conditions of those held in some Queensland institutions. It is equally important that locked environments like mental health wards are subjected to the same level of scrutiny as prisons and watch houses, she said. It's deeply concerning to think that these visits would be restricted. If there's nothing going on in there, then we shouldn't be afraid of that level of scrutiny. This brings me back to what I said before. If you've got nothing to hide, right? So, what have you got to hide, New South Wales? What really have you got to hide that we've witnessed? Weeps. And the creeps. <laughs>